Hello, everyone. Um, today, uh, Rhea and I will be presenting about the Berkman Method, and uh, we'll talk about why we love it, how we spread it to our chapter, and uh, how it benefited us. And then at the end, uh, Chan will come in and talk about how our what our chapter has done in terms of philanthropy efforts. Uh, so I'll kick it off uh, by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Wade Alcazaz. I am currently, uh, I major at U University of British Columbia in uh, business management and computer science. I currently serve the chapter's chapter president and I pledged um, actually three, almost three years ago now in uh, fall of 2018. I'm originally from Damascus, Syria. Uh, next. Hi everyone, um, I'm Rhea. I am a marketing major at UBC. I am the current VP membership of our chapter as well as the president elect. And I pledged in um, spring of 2019, so that's a little over two years ago. And I'm originally from Manila in the Philippines. Okay, so, so oh, sorry Rhea, this is yours. So before we started off um, explaining like the Berkman method, we just wanted to give a shout out to President's Academy because both Wade and I went um, to President's Academy in January. And um, one of the activities that we had to do beforehand was to do the Berkman assessment. And when we ran through the workshops at um, the whole event, Wade and I realized that it was something that we wanted to bring back to our own chapter. And um, we thought that it would be super interesting to see like where everyone was at um, in terms of like their assessments. Yeah, I'd say that uh, at President's Academy after Rhea and I did the Berkman, um, we realized that our personalities are actually very, very close. We knew that already, but we didn't realize how close. And so even our working relationship afterwards got just so much better. Um, we understood each other at a deeper level after that. Um, and we wanted the same for our leadership. Um, so you're probably thinking, you know, if you haven't heard of the Berkman yet, um, what is the Berkman method? So uh, the Berkman method is reveals four key uh, perspectives or characteristics about your personality. It assesses uh, your motivation, uh, your self-perception, your social perception, and your mindset. And it does this through a test that first asks you about how do you think the world around you perceives particular things? And then it proceeds to ask you, how do you perceive these same things. And lastly, it asks for sort of your career aspirations. It dives into which careers would you rather take over others? Um, and in that way, it starts to assess uh, whether you are more extroverted or introverted, uh, if you're more um, task focused or people focused and sort of where you lie on that spectrum. Um, as far as I know, the Berkman has assessed about 300,000 personalities or so. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's not sort of a one size fits all or you're one of the four quadrants and not the other. And so um, the reason why Rhea and I thought that we, the reason why we loved it and the reason why we wanted to spread it is uh, mostly because the results of this test helped us understand and identify um, these perceptions of ourselves that we didn't necessarily put into words before. And uh, they empowered us to realize when are we stressed? How do we behave when we're not stressed? And how do we work better together under both of those circumstances? And so um, the Berkman has a bunch of uh, symbols um, and I will go on to the next one for Rita to explain. Yeah, so um, as you saw on the last slide, there was um, like all of the colors and um, the Berkman also uses symbols to, um, I guess, kind of explain um, you and things like your interests, your behaviors and your stress. Um, so your interests obviously are things that you like to pour your energy in, um, things that you really enjoy. Your usual behavior is um, just how you get your needs met and um, your stress behaviors are just things that you do when you're stressed. So like certain, um, I guess, patterns. And um, what the Berkman does is that they, I guess, categorize these different areas into like the three different colors. So you might be, sorry, four different colors and you might be primarily in one of the colors but each of these symbols could be in different areas. So I myself am all blue, but I know that Wade is both blue and green. 
Yeah, one thing to note here is also that the needs and the stress behavior from what Ria and I have seen usually lie on the same spot. I find that to be very interesting because um, you get stressed when your needs aren't met and that's why sort of they're always together. Whereas the usual behavior and your interests can lie on that same color, maybe a different position on that same color or entirely in a different quadrant. And uh, I'm going to show you on the next slide, um, we prompt, uh, Ria and I decided to do a workshop for all of our leadership. So that included our executive board members and our committee heads and um, their committee members. Uh, we all got together, we did the test beforehand, uh, read our results and Ria and I sort of tried to dissect that. Um, so this uh, picture here shows where our interests lie on the map. And uh, this is sort of all of our chapters, um, chapter leadership's interest. And so uh, the, the pattern we saw is, is, is quite interesting. A lot of us, our interests lie in blue um, and some of us are in green and a fewer are in yellow. Um, none of us are in red, which was very interesting. I know that uh, Ria and I went into that workshop uh, with a lot of false presumptions of um, who could be in red and who could be in yellow. And I think one of the major key, key takeaways from me is that it's not so simple. Um, also, one thing I wanted to note as well is, for example, I was over... Uh, I don't know if you can actually see my mouse as I hover over it, but I was uh, sort of down there in blue. It says WA. Um, and you could be, you know, closer to the yellow quadrant. Um, you could also be closer to the green at the same time by being sort of nearer to the center of the, near to the center of where all of them intersect. And uh, since there's no particular like clear cut one color or one personality type, you're just a more, complex um, individual with a lot more, you're, you're, you're deeper maybe than somebody who is, you know, entirely blue or entirely green. Um, Rhea, did, did you want to add anything onto, onto this one? Yeah, um, as Wade said that we thought that we would have somebody in red, um, turns out we didn't, but something that we did realize, and you will see this on another map that we have later on, is that, um, like minds tend to attract other like minds. So because we have our e-board and our e-board is in charge of hiring our directors and picking who will be in those positions, we realized that um, people often tended to, I guess, pick the people that think along the same lines. And that's very understandable, but at the same time, we also realized that maybe we should have more reds on the team have some a little more diversity in the way that we think because that could probably help us tackle our challenges in different ways and come up with better solutions. Yeah. Um, on to the next. So um, this was just the interests. Now there are still usual behaviors uh, and needs and stress behaviors. And so um, to keep this workshop a little more um, Sort of interactive, we had our participants uh, annotate, put in where are their usual behaviors on the map. And we actually noticed something that was very interesting. Um, most of us are leaning towards the people side. Um, you can see from all the little stars and the, and the names, uh, the hearts as well. Most of us are just like crammed into that right side of people. And that totally makes sense. We're, we're in a fraternity. Um, and regardless, we felt that regardless of um, whether you were in the green quadrant and the blue quadrant. And I realized that uh, Rhea and I haven't gotten to what is what, and that's for a reason, uh, because we want to eliminate biases, is um, we were all more people, you know, more people focused. Um, what I wanted to add on to this one was that um, we felt like the interactive portion of the workshop uh, was the reason why people took away had the key takeaways and um, it made them feel like sort of they're involved in this process, obviously, because it's, again, it's about their own personality. Okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's dive into the quadrants. What do the four mean and what they are? Uh, Ria, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah. Okay, so the red, um, which we have a lack of is um, called the doer. So it's described as they, they have an environment of energetic simplicity, which personally, I that sounds kind of complicated, don't really know what that means. 
but I guess it's it's someone that um, likes to tackle their problems head on, um, super task oriented, likes to finish the job, um, very concentrated on it. Um, and yeah, their, their stress is they are insensitive, they can get impatient, um, they can be pretty impulsive. And one, one of the important things that Wade and I wanted to add to these colors is the part about stress management, um, because I feel like that would be super helpful um, because I mean, everyone gets stressed, especially now when it's like final season coming up. So the way that Reds can uh, manage their stress is if they can rechannel their energies so they can sort of spread that out instead of concentrating on that one thing that they're focusing on and also stopping and thinking about everything instead of just um, powering ahead. So yeah, that's, um, that's red. Um, try to keep these, I know there's a lot of info, but try to keep it in mind because uh, we have a little cool activity, activity later for you. Um, okay, so uh, yellow is the analyzer. Um, actually, uh, John, do you mind if I say your John Cervantes is yellow as well? So if you want to jump in here at any point and add some stuff, feel free. Um, their interests are, well, they're the analyzer. They're the very analytic person. Um, and they like to do things like schedule activities, do detailed work, delve into analysis, crunch the numbers. Um, they like to control a process and define the metrics by, by which it's measured and sort of the step-by-step -step way of, of it being done. Um, these people are very, very highly organized. Um, they're concentrative. Uh, they're cautious about processes because they love rules and regulations and things to be clear and outlined. And uh, they're also insistent on sort of getting, getting their way. Um, when they're stressed, um, their needs are consistency. They like to sort of, they, they rely on that consistency in order to thrive. Uh, they like to have procedures, as I said, and uh, they, when, on the people side, it's a lot about loyalty and trust. Um, they get stressed when things aren't in the ideal, you know, things aren't ideal. Um, it says passive aggressive. That doesn't necessarily mean that the people get passive aggressive, but um, it's sort of, you sort of internalize that of uh, the problems because maybe other people don't understand why you're stressed about, about something because you're very detail oriented. And uh, when, if you're, if you think you're a yellow an analyzer, when you're stressed, uh, try to think big picture, take yourself a little bit out of the nitty gritty and be receptive to others' ideas and opinions about why things are a certain way. Yeah, uh, John, did I, did I get that right? Or do you want to add something on here? No, pretty much spot on, pretty much spot on. <laughs> okay, thanks. I just wanted to add that um, John is our VP Finance, um, so it makes sense. He likes to work with numbers. <laughs> okay, on to blue. As I mentioned earlier, um, all of my symbols for the brick bin are on blue, which means I am a pure thinker, I guess. Um, so apparently we thrive in an environment of complexity and humanity. Um, generally, I feel like that means that we also tend to overthink a lot about um, the things that are around us and just generally like to question things. Um, so when it comes to planning, um, we, we love it. We like to work with new ideas. We like to think outside of the box. Um, but sometimes that means that we can be super indecisive or we could procrastinate because there's just like so much going on. Um, yeah, so we are, insightful and thoughtful, again, keeping in line with that whole thinking and like the thinker and ways to manage stress is to really focus on tasks at hand, um, outlining a timeline for when you want to tackle everything and try, trying to be more decisive with things so you can just move forward with your planning. Yeah, um, I want to shout out to Ria when I know because she's a blue every I know every time she's like super stressed, she's got a lot on her plate. She becomes one of the most organized people I've ever met and it helps her manage her stress. Uh, taught me to do the same. Um, I am both a blue and a green. Um, greens are communicators. Uh, they thrive in an environment of complex, 
uh, competitive flexibility um, with opportunities for individual excellence. And um, what I interpret that as is where you are in an environment um, where you all have this friendly competition, uh, where competition is not sort of a be all and end all. It doesn't have high stakes, but is rather um, friendly and helps you to thrive uh, and helps you to, as an individual, um, sort of raise the bar for yourself. Um, they are, they talk a lot, and I'll be honest, I talk a lot. Um, they, uh, they love to sell. They're very people oriented, so they love to sell, they love to promote. Um, greens often thrive in positions like sales and marketing, and they're very good at persuading and motivating others, raising others. Um, I'd categorize greens as people who, at, in a leadership position, you seek out others for their characteristics, their qualities, um, their unique propositions, bring them onto your team and let them do the best work that they can. You're sort of that person that brings people together and uh, sort of helps them to work and thrive together. Um, our usual behavior is we can be competitive, a little assertive when uh, we, we have particular ideas in our head, but at the same time, we are flexible. Um, we get jumpy and enthusiastic about a lot of new things. Uh, we're not afraid of change. However, um, to that is a double-edged sword where we need novelty all the time. We need new things or we get bored very easily. Um, we need um, personal incentives in order to jump into something. We also like to be independent. When we get stressed, um, you might relate to this, you rebel. You might, uh, that rebellion might be in terms of procrastinating or not wanting to do the particular work. Um, wanting to impose your own idea onto it in order to make it yours per se. Um, Sometimes you can be unfocused and chaotic. Uh, and so to that end, if, if you feel like this is you, um, try to follow order, organize yourself with a calendar, with a to-do list, put yourself on a deadline. Um, and in a team context, always think about your team rather than the individual and uh, yourself. So I promised an activity. Um, if, what I'll do is um, please use chat to put in what color you think your interests are, not necessarily your usual behavior or, or your um, stress behavior, but where do you think your interests lie? And what I'll do is I'll go back here to um, this nice thing here and uh, let me know where you lie. Okay, Jason vibes with yellow. Okay, seen some yellows, nice. Blues, greens. My interest is intense blue. That's awesome, Sandra. I think Korea's the same. <laughs> That's so interesting. I haven't seen any reds yet in chat. Oh, oops. Um, oh, my slides are acting up, my bad, sorry. Here we go. Okay, I've got some yellows, some greens, some blues. Interestingly enough, no reds. I don't know what's going on. Are they here? Are there any reds in this room? <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, if, uh, if you have an assumption of what uh, you could be, uh, challenge your assumption and uh, take the Berkman. It's available for every, for all of us for free. Um, and yeah, um, super, super interesting to realize the report dives deep into um, how you could be um, how you can realize yourself and what your self-perception is. Cool. Um, over to you, Ria. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about why you should take the Berkman for yourself, but it's also super, super helpful, um, especially when it comes to um, working with a team. So Wade and I work very, very closely together as we're both part of eBoard, along with John and our other eBoard members. And each of our eBoard members have their own um, team that they work with. So we thought that um, taking the Berkman and really understanding how you, firstly, how you behave, but also how you communicate with others was super important moving forward. And um, we also felt like because everything is suddenly online, like the time that we spend um, in meetings should be as efficient as possible to get over that whole like Zoom fatigue and everything. Um, so yeah, that's why we brought it to our 
our chapter. Um, and something that Wade and I realized after we took it at President's Academy was um, we immediately shared our results with each other and we had a conversation about it. And because um, like we mentioned earlier, Wade is currently our president and I'm the president elect. So we've been having a lot of transition meetings um, just to hand off the role. And we feel like taking the Berkman test really helped us to understand how we can communicate best with each other. And that has definitely helped our working relationship a lot, I feel. Um, like I know exactly when Wade is stressed that he wants to oversee everything that I'm doing, like all of my VP membership stuff. And um, he knows that he's just not allowed to change it. He can just look at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Wade, do you have anything you want to add on to this? Um, no, just, just the fact that uh, when, when we did the workshop, what I loved most about it was that it was a collective opportunity for all of us to reflect. Um, and it was also just, it was just straight up fun as well to challenge each other's assumptions about, you know, um, oh, is, is Wade a green? Is he a blue? You know, that kind of thing. It was, it's also quite fun. Um, okay, so um, we took you through most of the sort of the workshop slides that we presented. And I'd, I'd like to just um, show you this slide here. Um, in order to sort of educate and help our members understand, um, so now you know who's blue and who's green and who's red and who's in between, but now what, right? Now it's, it's understanding that leads us to understanding how we can relate to them and how we can help them in times of stress. And so some of the things that I learned about how to um, help and assist Rhea in her times of stress is to relate to, to her in a quiet way. But at the same time, when I know that she can be she can share why she's stressed is to push her a little bit to share with me why she's stressed. So I can offer my hand of help. Um, I always involve like Rhea in planning um, and make use of her creativity. Don't give her a box, just let her roam free. Um, showing deserved appreciation is one of my most uh, favorite uh, parts of this and um, asking them to help in ways directly related to their talents. And sort of th that's, th that's where I felt most comfortable um, relating to somebody who's a blue. Um, there are three more slides, green, red, and yellow, but we decided not to show them because the Berkman report itself goes into this detail. And so we want to encourage you to go take the test. So we're not going to, you know, spo spoil everything. Um, but what we'd like to close with is Rhea and I would like to talk about how um, we related to others and touch on the feedback that we've gotten from brothers. Yeah. Um, so actually, wait, do you want to start off with your example first? I feel like yeah. that works. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I have a roommate who uh, you know, I live with, lived with for almost a year now, and he works with John directly. And uh, he is in the yellow quadrant. But interestingly enough, he isn't a pure yellow. He is a mix of red, green, and yellow. And um, before doing the Berkman, uh, with him and before diving deep with into his results and his diving into mine, um, our working relationship was very much um, summed up with, can you, can we get this done? Yes, we can. Gets it done, comes back and that's it. And there wasn't a lot of that in-depth communication, the brainstorming, the, the fun parts about working with another person. It was, it was very clear, concise and clear cut. And um after I got to know, like after I could put into words um, sort of his stress management behavior and his interests, and he could do the same for me, I would say our working relationship took a big step up because um, we understood exactly without saying sometimes certain things, what the other person really meant. Yeah, so um, I asked Wade to start off with his example because it was about um, I guess two people who are very different and how they managed to bridge that gap. But um, my example is with one of my close friends. We pledged together and um, we've been working really closely together for the past two years. Um, and when we took the Berkman test, we realized how similar we were because we were both completely all blue. Um, and we just thought that that was super interesting. And we also had a conversation about it, but Nothing really happened from there, but a couple of weeks ago, um, 
we're currently in the middle of planning for like our end of year celebration, as well as like a celebration for our graduating brothers. And um, so um, this friend of mine, he is in charge of all of that. He's taking the brunt of all the work. And he was talking about how like stressed he was because there was so much to do in so little time. And I kept on offering my help and he was, and he just said like, no, it's fine. Um, but I sort of thought, okay, that's exactly what I would say if I was super stressed and maybe I should just push a little, see if that works. Um, I did, I ended up just saying like, please just let me help. You'll be fine. You have to wake up for work in a few hours. Um, so like we ended up being on video call for like three hours, just finishing all the work together. Um, so I thought it was super interesting because that was something that I realized was something like about myself, but it also applied to someone very similar to me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, finally, here's just uh, some feedback that we got from our brothers who took it. Um, some of them are funny, some of them are extensive. Uh, feel free to have a read. Um, my funniest one is Nick saying that it seems to be testing our predilection for psychopathy. Um, that was funny. But um, we think that our brothers loved it. And we know um, that a lot of the comedians have gotten a little closer, understood each other a little better, and put their personalities into words. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, we hope that you guys take the Berkman as well. Bring it to your chapters. Um, it's a really cool tool.